Hello students, welcome to Legacy IS Academy. In today's video, we are going to discuss about a recent weather phenomena that is making the news headlines all across the India. That weather phenomena is heat wave, which is being recorded in India. So let us try to understand what are the causes of heat waves, what are heat waves and why such kind of weather phenomena is a cause of concern. So first of all, to give you the brief context of this issue, IMD that is the Indian Meteorological Department has announced that India will see more than average number of heat waves in this year's hot weather season that lasts somewhere between April to June. Now above normal temperatures are likely to be recorded as a result of this over most parts of the country and the heat is predicted to impact the southern peninsular regions of India, central part of India that has states such as Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Maharashtra, eastern part of India, especially around Chotanagpur Plateau and the northwestern plains that is the part of Gujarat, Rajasthan all the way up to Punjab, Haryana region the most. The announcement comes even as India is already struggling to keep up with its power demand obviously because of the demand in a power consumption device, uh, devices such as AC, coolers and all which increases significantly during the summer season. Now the forecast as has been predicted or given by the IMD, let us try to understand. So it has said that most of India except few parts of the eastern India, the northeastern India and some pockets in the northwestern regions, it will experience above normal maximum and minimum temperatures. The effect of this obviously will be heat related illnesses in people. We can see increased incidences, especially for those people who has to spend most of their time outside of their homes to sustain their livelihood. Second, it will also affect the agricultural output as the extreme heat may cause crippling of the entire crop and the agricultural products. Third, obviously water scarcity as being seen in many cities of India including Bangalore will become much and more difficult and increase in the demand for energy obviously for getting relief from the heat of the summer and overall due to all these factors the entire ecosystem as well as the air quality will also degrade and become more worse. Now the forecast basically is based on another meteorological phenomena that is referred as El Nino. So it says that El Nino event which basically refers to the unusual warming of the water near the South American coast, especially along Peru, Peru and Chile and around the equatorial region of Pacific Ocean. This event has weakened since the beginning of the year. Despite that, the moderate extent of Elino condition is still exists over the equatorial Pacific and it is due to this phenomena, increase in the sea surface temperature is being recorded. Now, since the Pacific Ocean covers almost one third of the entire landmass of the earth, any change that happens in the temperature of the Pacific will cause subsequent changes in the overall wind flow pattern and that can disrupt weather worldwide including Indian Ocean and Indian subcontinent. Now as far as January 2024 was concerned, it was the warmest January that we have recorded in last 175 years. The US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration uh, is the agency that has clarified and that has basically published this particular fact. Now how El Nino can affect the weather in Indian Ocean? Let us try to briefly understand this also. So basically in the El Nino condition as we have discussed what happens is the temperature near the South American coast becomes higher and as this temperature becomes higher here the air rises near the South America and then air basically sinks down near the Australian coast or near the Southeast Asian region we can say. Due to this over South America we observe very heavy rainfall and over Southeast Asia we observe a drought like phenomena because this kind of sinking of air prevents any kind of condensation, uh, cloud formation and thus precipitation. Also during the El Nino condition the Southeast trade winds becomes very very weak in nature. And this trade wind is responsible for bringing southwest monsoon in the Indian coast. So if El Nino condition prevail, what will happen? The monsoon in India will also become weaker, will be delayed and that will also aggravate the problem related to the summer season or heating related to the summer season. On the other hand, in normal weather, we have strong southeasterly trade winds. You have heavy rainfall across Southeast Asia and thus monsoon is also much, much more stronger in that case. 
So what lies ahead? Now obviously the average global land and ocean surface temperature if you compare was almost 0 0.04 degrees Celsius higher than the previous highest that we recorded almost 7 years back in 2016. The El Nino is however likely to weaken as far as the NOAA is concerned during the upcoming season and may eventually turn neutral in nature. In that case, models have in predicted the possibility of La Nina like conditions developing during the monsoon. Now, La Nina is exact opposite of El Nino. During La Nina, the south easterly trade winds become stronger than usual and they drive a strong southwesterly monsoon toward India, causing heavy rainfall and even sometimes flood like conditions. And once La Nina establishes itself, especially during the monsoon, it can intensify rainfall across entire South Asia, particularly in India's northwest as well as Bangladesh region. So, this may provide some relief from the crisis that we will see in the summer season. Now we are talking about the heat wave declaration by IMD. So what is heat wave? Now qualitatively a heat wave can occur when the temperature of air becomes fatal to the human body. That is quantitative, qualitative aspect. Heat waves in India are typically recorded between the months of March and June and tend to peak in the month of May. So how these are declared by IMD? So IMD follows a formula. Different formulas are followed for hilly areas and the plain areas. So in the plain areas, Heat wave is considered if temperature is 40 degrees Celsius or higher, while in plain hills it is considered if temperature is 30 degrees Celsius or higher. Now if normal maximum temperature is above 40 degrees Celsius, heat wave condition will be declared if the deviation happens to the extent of 4 to 5 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, if normal maximum temperature remains at or below 40 degrees Celsius, heat wave is declared if the temperature becomes more than 5 to 6 degrees Celsius or higher by 5 to 6 degrees Celsius. Similarly, severe heat wave conditions are said to prevail if the normal temperature, maximum temperature of any station is 40 degrees Celsius and here deviation is 6 degrees Celsius or more than this temperature. And similarly, the stations where normal maximum temperature remains at or below 0, 40 degrees, any deviation to extent of 7 degrees Celsius or more can lead to declaration of a severe heat wave like condition. So when should a heat wave be declared? Recorded maximum temperature either at or above 45 degrees Celsius for all locations or at or above 40 degrees Celsius for the coastal locations. So hills, plains, any locations in the India and the coastal locations. This is how we can quantitative, quantitatively IMD declares heat wave and qualitatively whenever such kind of waves become fatal to the human body. Now we know that heat wave like conditions and the number of heat waves are continuously increasing. So what might be the reason or factor behind that? So all over the world, it is not only about India, heat waves are all over the world getting more recurrent that is more frequent, intense nature and lethal and the major culprit is the climate change, specifically the global warming. So the abnormal temperature that is caused due to climate change could have a severe impact on over 90% of India's landmass. Now any increase in the number of heat wave days and their intensity can exact steep cost from India's public health care as well as agricultural output thus affecting livelihood of the people affecting the food production, agricultural food production especially, which can be very, very disastrous in a country where population density is so high. Disease spread can also happen and many more sectors can be impacted. The higher temperature can also affect human health by causing heat stress and even death. Now, if we talk about the election that is going to take place in India and how heat wave can affect it. So obviously, if you look at the guidelines that also has been released by the social media cell of Election Commission of India, it says that general elections to Lok Sabha is going to take place soon. So follow the guidelines to ensure smooth voting. Now what is the guidelines that has been released? Obviously, one way how you can beat the heat wave, even if you are outside, is by drinking sufficient water so that dehydration does not happen and always carry a water bottle along with itself. That is the first guideline given by election commission. Second, it says that rehydrate your body with ORS, that is oral rehydration solution and homemade drinks so that your body does not lose necessary important minerals from your body. Wear light cotton clothes and carry umbrella or hat obviously to protect against the intense sunlight. 
At the same time, ECI has said that these are things you are not expected to do. That is avoid carbonated soft drinks, avoid bringing children to the polling stations and do not leave children or pets in the parking vessel because obviously the interior of these vessel, uh, vehicles becomes very, very hot, which can be disastrous. So that is all about this particular video. I hope you understood about the concept of heat wave in India. Thank you very much.